Hi, welcome to this tutorial on differentiation where we're going to look at something called the gradient function. But before we do that, what I want to do is just cast your mind back to gradient for straight lines. What was gradient? Well, it was a measure of steepness or rate of change. So if we had a line something like this, then we measure gradient as being how much we rise or fall in y for every one unit we move in the positive x direction. So for this line here, which we'll call say line 1, then as we move across one unit in this direction, do you notice that we rise two units in the positive sense of y? One unit across, two up. So we say that this line has a gradient of 2. There's a rate of change of 2 units in the y direction for every 1 unit across. If we took another line, this one here, which we'll call line number 2, what about the gradient for this one? Well, can you see that what happens is we drop three units for every one unit that we go across to the right. And because we're dropping three units, we call it minus three. So there's a gradient or a rate of change for this second line of minus three. And what happens if we have a horizontal line? This line here, number three, say, what's the rate of change of y with respect to x in this one? Well, every time we move across, say, one unit in that direction, y neither goes up nor down. So what we've got here is a gradient of zero. There's no rate of change. So now that we know how to work out gradient for straight lines, what happens when we've got curves? How do we measure gradient then? Well, what I like to think of is that we can think of a curve as like a roller coaster. If you've got your truck going down like this, imagine that there was a break in the rail. Let's suppose you have a break at this point here. All right? Let's just rub out part of that curve there. The truck's coming round here, say. If there's a break in that curve, that truck is going to be moving in a direction out here, straight out, okay, as if that line carried on in that direction. And so we often say that if we're talking about the gradient at this point on the curve, it's given by the gradient of this line, often called a tangent to the curve at this point. And as a rough estimate, it looks like the gradient of this line is for every one across we nearly rise one unit. So that would be a gradient of one at this point here. Let's take another point on the curve. Let's suppose we took a point over here say. Let's just think of what would happen, what direction would our truck be going if it's coming round here and the line breaks here. It would be moving something in this direction. And so the steepness, the gradient, the rate of change of y with respect to x would be given by the steepness of this tangent here. And just looking at this, it strikes me that for every one unit we go across, let's say we start here, one unit we go across, it seems to drop something like two-thirds of a unit. So the gradient here, at this point, would be minus two-thirds. The problem comes, though, in trying to estimate the gradient by drawing what we think is the appropriate tangent. We need a better way of working out what the gradient is on curves. And there is a way. We use something called the gradient function. And the gradient function is often written as dy by dx. 
I like to think of this as the difference in y over the difference in x. The rate of change of y with respect to x. This is called the gradient function. And to work it out, it depends on what type of curve you've got. Now suppose the equation of the curve was y equals 2x cubed minus 6x squared plus x plus 1, for example. Then this equation consists of several terms. And it can be shown that if you've got an equation that's got terms of the form y equals ax to the power n, as you can see here with the 2x cubed and the minus 6x squared, then it can be shown that dy by dx for those type of terms is a times n multiplied by x to the power n minus 1. Now, I'm giving this result without any proof, but we don't really necessarily need to know that proof, but uh, just use the result. But if you would like some idea about how we get results like this, I give it in a later tutorial. And we've got terms like this one of the form y equals a constant. Let's call it a times x. For those types of terms, it can be shown that dy by dx always equals a. And for constants on their own, terms of the form y equals a, dy by dx turns out to be equal to 0. Now, I would encourage you to learn these results because you're going to need them every time that you start to differentiate terms of this particular form. So, if we're going to differentiate this to get the gradient function, what are we going to get? Well, for the first term, 2x cubed, it's this type, ax to the power n where a is the 2 and n is the 3. And the result is a times n. So we do the power times the number at the front. 2 times 3 is 6. And then we reduce the power by 1. So it's going to be x to the power 2. And again, we've got the same kind of thing for the second term. The a value is minus 6 and the power n is the 2. So when we do 2 times the minus 6, we get minus 12. We reduce the power by 1. So if we take 1 off the power 2, we got x to the power 1. But we might as well just leave it as x. What about this term here, plus x? This is a term like this. It is a plus 1x, so our value of a is 1. And when we differentiate it, we just get the a value. So in this case, it would be plus 1. And for the last term here, the constant, constants differentiate, if they're on their own, to 0. So we could write plus 0, but that would be a bit of a waste of time, so we'll just leave it. So dy by dx equals 6x squared minus 12x plus 1. And this is our gradient function. It gives us the gradient at any point x on our curve. So if we imagine that this was this curve here and we wanted to find the gradient say at this point here where say x was 2 then all I need to do is substitute when x equals 2 into the gradient function. So when x is 2 we end up with dy by dx equaling 6 times 2 squared and then minus 12 times 2 plus that one on the end. And if you work this out, you end up with 24, take away another 24, plus 1. You end up with 1 then. So that's saying that the gradient at x equals 2 is 1. And you can see from this graph that that seems to agree quite favourably with the tangent that I've drawn in here. For every 1 across, we rise 1. But as I say, this is only a sketch graph. It isn't really this equation. But it's just there to give you an idea of what's going on. Now, 
there are other ways that we can write dy by dx to differentiate with respect to x. Quite often you'll see in textbooks and exam papers that instead of y equals something, you'll see y equals f of x. So in other words, you could see f of x equaling the 2x cubed minus 6x squared plus x plus 1. And when we want to differentiate our function f of x, instead of writing dy by dx, it's quite often seen as f with a little dash here, f dash x. Some people pronounce it f prime x. So it's short for differentiating our function with respect to x. And obviously you're going to get exactly the same result as we had before. So if I wanted to find out the gradient when x was 2, all I need to do is put 2 in here for x. And we would therefore have f dash of 2 equals, and you put the 2 in there and you would get 1. So an alternative notation. Well, I hope that's given you some background on what differentiation is. And it will vary depending on what type of terms you've got in your equation. But more about that in later tutorials.